Hello, everybody. Welcome to this lecture on the scientific method. So this is really a lecture on how we know anything at all. Um, for a lot of this class, you've looked at a lot of chemistry, physics, math, biology, uh, to make conclusions, right? But how does one know anything? How does one know whether just looking at bogus numbers or it actually makes sense? How do we figure out things, right? And so the scientific method is basically a way uh, we use to, to figure out whether we know things at all, right? Uh, and it involves a lot of iterative testing and trying to poke holes in your own, own, own um, ideas, right? Um, and so a lot of it might seem very simple. You might be like, duh, I mean, I already know this, right? But the lines between like fact and fiction, as is in 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 real life, is, is kind of blurred. Uh, even some of the best scientists in the world might do, in fact, uh, mess this up. And and, and, and it's, it, it's very easy to to you know forget that you're operating on this right on on, on the scientific matter, right? Um, and so it's, it's as, it's, it's in some ways philosophical too. All right, so I'll get started on it. So I found this, this set of, um, this example on Khan Academy and the link is below. So for example, suppose you want to know something, right? Just anything, like maybe your toaster isn't working in the morning. So you plug your toaster in, in, in a particular socket and the toaster won't run. Oh, great, your toaster won't run. So now what do you do? So you make an observation first, right? That, ah, oh, duh, my toaster doesn't work. And you're like, all right, my toaster doesn't work. Let me, then you go on and you ask the question, right? Why won't my, my toaster work? Oh, which is again, obvious. What else would you do? You need your bread. Um, and then, and then what do you do? And then you try to fix the problem, right? And to fix the problem, there are infinite number of, of possibilities of why the toaster do can't, doesn't work. So you just choose one possibility and you say, well, maybe the outlet is broken, right? Or maybe the toaster is broken. But let's say for this example, we just say the outlet is broken and we start off there. And we say, all right, the outlet is broken. And we, we make an, uh, what we call the hypothesis. So now a hypothesis has to be something that's testable. Like this hypothesis that the outlet is broken is a good hypothesis because we can actually test that. Um, if we had just one outlet in the whole house and there were no other outlets, that would have been a difficult hypothesis to test, right? Um, that doesn't mean the outlet still couldn't be broken, but that would have made the problem way more difficult. But let's say right now for our case, we have multiple outlets at home. And we come up with the hypothesis that your outlet is broken and we're gonna test that out now. So you come up with that hypothesis and like I said, it needs to be something testable. So you make a prediction on that hypothesis, right? So if my hypothesis is true that the outlet is really broken, I should be able to take that toaster, plug it into another outlet and the toaster should work, right? And I'll be able to toast right. At that point, I'll know that obviously the toaster isn't wrong because it's working on this other outlet. Um, and then you go and go ahead and take the toaster out and put it in the other outlet and you see if it works, right? And then the moment of truth, if it does work and you say, wow, all right, my toaster works, it's definitely the outlet. But that's where a lot of people go wrong, right? It works, that's good, it's most probably the outlet. But then what makes good science is to figure out what exactly was wrong in the outlet, right? So you maybe open up the outlet and you see, oh, like this is short circuited or whatever. You try poking holes in your own, own right, hypothesis that is going to become a theory, right? Um, so you try to see exactly what's wrong in your, in your, in your toaster, what's, what's up with it. You try to, maybe there's some other component in between, maybe it's not. I don't know, maybe if there was dust or something uh, that acted as an insulator. 
so you try you you try to poke holes in your hypothesis and if you still if you still come up with the same same answer then maybe your outlet was broken right now let's say you plug it into the new socket and it still doesn't work the toaster and so now your hypothesis is is is, is not supported so well now what do you do now what you don't do is like be bullheaded about it and say no it's definitely not right you go back to your hypothesis and you say all right let me tweak my hypothesis and let me say well if it's still not working maybe my toaster is broken and then you test that out and you maybe open it up you test different components of it right and you keep doing this and this is how all science works this is how all this for example if you wanted to at this point maybe let's say you were the only scientist in the world and and during COVID-19 and you wanted to figure out like you saw this this huge uh, flux of influenza cases, right? Uh, and you wanted to figure out, oh, what's going on, right? So your first question would be, uh, you'd make an observation that there are a bunch of influenza cases going around. Uh, and you'd maybe ask the question, well, I mean, at this point, you don't even know it's influenza. Let's say it's a bunch of, uh, there's a sickness going around and you'd say, well, you'd ask a question. And the better question you ask, the better science you create, right? You ask a question. Well, what's what's causing people to get sick? And then you come up with a hypothesis. And that and listen, that hypothesis can be. You could say it's maybe it's a virus, maybe it's a bacteria, maybe it's five G towers. No, for real, it, you, it it's fine as long as it's a hypothesis and you test it. Um, like I said, maybe it's five G, maybe it's Bigfoot, maybe it's I, I don't know anything, right? Maybe it's lizard people, right? Um, and then you go ahead and you start testing it, right? You, you, your hypothesis should be such that you can test it out. You, you do these steps, you make a prediction. Well, if it's a virus, then what does that mean? It means that you should find that virus in, in everybody that, that suffers from that particular disease. And maybe you go one step further and Maybe that's proven right, and maybe you go one step further and you actually infect not sick people with that virus, or you infect mice with that virus or whatever, right? And and you notice the result. If it's 5G towers, then maybe you put a mouse on top of a 5G tower, or you go sit on the 5G tower and see whether you get that same infection. And you keep trying to poke holes in your own hypothesis, right? And you see if it's still supported. And that's how we know things. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's a vast topic. It's something that um, people forget very quickly. Um, but I find, I find this like an interesting topic to talk about, uh, sort of intersection of philosophy and science. So yeah.